Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I have a quick one for you today. I'm gonna to show you real quick what I do to service disc brakes. And what I mean by that is I'm not replacing the brake pads. I'm not doing anything like that. It's just periodically, it's not a bad idea to take apart the caliper and remove the brake pads, clean everything up, lubricate everything up with a proper lubricant, put it all back together and send it on its way. This is something that I personally do during a major service. On Hondas, that happens about every 30,000 miles. Uh, and also it's a good idea just to get your eyeballs on the brake pads, find out how they're wearing. Sometimes it might appear that the outer pad is got, has got plenty of uh, material left on it, but then you remove the caliper and you find out the inner pad has a lot less material. In fact, what I'm showing you here is one of the things that can help prevent that kind of uneven pad wear. Anytime you find uneven pad wear, it could indicate either the caliper itself is having an issue or the caliper is not moving properly like it should. If that happens, it can cause uneven pad wear. So this is a good way to help prevent that. And you can do it virtually at any time. So if you feel like doing it, you can do this. Now, this is on an Asian vehicle. This is a 2004 Honda Odyssey. Uh, your experience may vary, but the principles are virtually the same and many of the lubricants are the same. Why don't we get started? Okay, these are the tools and materials I'll be using today. And I'll put a link in the description to uh, some of these things. So if you don't have them and don't know where to find them, well, look no further than the description. Uh, what I have here is a can of brake clean. Um, you can also use the non-aerosol type that just pumps up and that's just fine, or in a squirt bottle, whatever. Uh, an old dirty rag, a small pry bar. In this case, I need a 14 millimeter to take the caliper apart. I have here uh, 3M silicone paste, and I also have 3M uh, brake lubricant, which is AKA anti-seize uh, here. And you can also use the different color anti-seize, the silver stuff or whatever, uh, will work just as good. Also, actually you can use uh, molly grease for uh, in place of that as well. But the silicone paste is something that I strongly recommend. As you can see, I have the vehicle supported by a jack stand underneath here so it's not just hanging on the jack itself. You don't always have to take both fasteners out. In fact, you can just take one fastener out, in this case the lower fastener, and you'll be just fine. But I usually start with the lower one. In this case, like I said, it's a 14 millimeter. Remove the bolt, and with just the one out, you can swing the caliper up and then push it off of its slide pin like that. And this right here is the slide pin. And I set it up on top, of the, on top of the brake assembly to be up out of the way. I don't like to let calipers just hang by the brake hose. You can actually damage the brake hose by doing that. Then remove the brake pads. Sometimes that small pry bar comes in handy. Then I just uh, use some brake clean and I clean out the, the slides, basically where the caliper rides inside the, uh, this cradle here. Also, it's probably not a bad idea to wear safety glasses so you don't get those chemicals in your eyes. But I just go in with my rag and I just clean the area where the brake pads ride. Now that I've got all the area where the, uh, well, the, where the brake pads ride, the next thing I want to do is turn my attention to the slide pins themselves. And for these, all you've got to do is just pull them out, I grab hold of the boot, and then I just pull the slide pin out. Now here's the slide pin. It looks kind of dirty and gross. And you'll notice this one has kind of a rubber damper on it. And what that rubber damper does is it helps keep down noise in the brake system. You'll also notice a little bit of wear on this pin and maybe a little bit of rust. All completely normal. Caliper slide pins get lubricated with silicone paste. Now this is the way they come from the factory. Everybody says that they want to use grease for this. If you use grease and it mixes with silicone paste, it will turn into a yucky substance that basically causes these pins to seize inside their bores. You do not want this. So to avoid it, use the same silicone paste that was on the thing from the factory when it came out. So don't use grease for this. Then when I, when I install this slide pin, I'm gonna grab the boot and I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit to burp any air out that might be in there. What you might find is that this wants to push back out against you and that's because there might be a little bit of air trapped in here. You want to try to avoid that because if that happens, that can actually put a little bit of pressure on the brake pads and possibly cause some uneven wear. I haven't really seen that, but you want to just be mindful of it. 
Next, I'm going to clean that upper slide pin, which is still attached to the main part of the caliper, in the same way. I'm just going to clean it off with a rag, come back in with my silicone paste, just paint a little bit on there. I'm going to set that back out of the way for now. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the brake pads themselves. Uh, you know, take a look at them, see if they're wearing unevenly, that kind of thing. This, this is sort of normal. There might be just like a little rust ridge on the inside of that uh, brake rotor that's causing that. But I'm just going to go to those ends and do the same thing that I did before uh, inside where the slides were. This time I'm not going to use the brake clean though. I'm just going to take my rag and wipe off any dust that's here. And that's something to be mindful of. Brake dust isn't necessarily good for you. So try not to breathe it in. In fact, it's probably not a bad idea to wear a dust mask when you do this kind of work just to avoid any issues like that. Now do you see this area here where there's, you could see where this uh, little bit of rust where the pad was making contact with something. That's actually part of this assembly up in here that helps locate this and, and also helps keep it from making some noise. So I'm gonna clean that area also. Now, for me, I believe this indicator has been put on the wrong side. A lot of people put these on the bottoms. I always put them on the leading edge of the brake pad. And what that means is as the wheel rotates, I want the uh, indicator to be on the top to catch it where it starts. This means that as somebody goes into reverse, that's when this thing's gonna make the most noise. If you put it on the bottom, it'll make noise going forward. That's kind of a pain in the butt, but they come from the factory usually on what I call the leading edge of the brake pad. So the brake pad, as the rotor rotates, that doesn't matter if the caliper's on the front or the back, as the, as the rotor rotates, you want the indicator to be on that leading edge. So now that I've got these all cleaned up, I'm going to take a little bit of that anti-seize or molly grease. Um, it doesn't have to be this copper anti-seize. And every place that this pad was making contact, I'm just going to put just a little dab. And I don't mean a lot, just a little bit. And this will make it so that the brake pad can move freely inside the caliper. And the reason I want that is because Brake pads don't just, just apply, they have to release as well. And this actually helps them release after they've been applied. Install the brake pads back inside the caliper. Okay, now that our brake pads are back in place, I'm just going to take the caliper, slide it through the pin, burp it out again. Remember, we want to try to eliminate any, any trap there that might have happened. And then on the other bolt, this, I, what I often do is I just take just a little bit of anti-seize and I might put it on the bolt threads. And I do this to keep this from binding up inside this caliper pin here. I'll just tighten it up. And we're done. Now we repeat the process on the other side, or if you have calipers in the back, perform the same procedure. Well, as you can see, brake service is not that difficult, but it can save you a lot of time and headache later. Uh, and also, it gives you a really good idea of what kind of shape your caliper and your brake pads are in. If you go to remove one of the slide pins and say it's stuck inside the bore, that can indicate, well, that does indicate a problem. And usually I take those slide pins over to a wire wheel, clean up whatever rust or gunk is on them, and then maybe shoot a little brake clean down inside the board to try to clean that out. Maybe hit that with a little bit of compressed air. Then I relubricate it with silicone and then I stick the pin back inside the bore and I make sure that it can move freely. And at that point, I know that the caliper is able to do its job properly. Just something like this will help your brakes last a lot longer. Maybe even give you better gas mileage if you've got a caliper or something like that that's hanging up. But this kind of thing, like I said, about every 30,000 miles on Hondas, Check your uh, owner's manual for the, or service manual for the service interval on your particular vehicle. Hey, if you have automotive questions, head over to earthcarguy.com. Why? Because it's awesome. I have a list of categories of the most commonly asked questions that I get. You can use those to perhaps help you find an answer to the issue that you're having. If that doesn't work, hey, type a couple of keywords into the search function, or you can type in your check engine light codes. That'll come through our database give you uh, as many answers as we possibly have for you there. If that's still not enough, you can sign up for a form. It's absolutely free. All you need is a valid email address. Just be sure to respond to the confirmation email that should end up in your inbox. 
If that's not there, check your spam folder, bulk folder, do what you can to try to click that activation link because if you don't, you won't be able to complete registration and we'll all be very sad about that. If you wish to connect with me socially, you can find me on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.